Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'll be adding some details to my atrial scale structure over here using some ventilation detail kits from ITLA scale models. Pretty excited about these, so let's get started. Okay, so here are the kits that I'll be using for this video. A couple di different HVAC detail kits. This one is just HO scale uh, air ducts. Uh, this one is like a multi-scale. You can use it for N or HO. Um, this little machine house in N scale doubles as an HVAC unit for HO. If you flip it around, uh, I think there's some detail parts to make it look like that. Um, I also have this here. This is a wall detail kit that I forgot I even had uh, from a while ago. And it's got some fans and different things on it that I think I might incorporate into that uh, machine house to make it look more like an HO scale uh, HVAC unit. So next step is to open these up and take a look at the sheets that are in there and see how I could even configure it onto my current structure, uh, compare the shapes to um, some of the open spots on the sides of my buildings uh, where I could even put them. So uh, let's open these up. Okay, so before we go any further, I want to show you exactly what comes in these kits before we get going here. This is the HO adduct kit over here. Comes with some different configurable pieces. You basically glue these uh, back to back for each one of these to get the, the actual thickness of the vents. We've got some bracing, some wall connection plates, and then this is that multi-scale kit over here with the machine house and some ducts and some details. And I think what I'll do is there's a back wall uh, to this machine house. I'm going to make it an HVAC unit and I'll use that back wall that's going to be facing towards um, when you're looking at the layout. they got some vents for it. And I think what I'll do is this wall detail kit that I forgot I even had. <laughs> um, I'm going to take maybe one or two of these fans and incorporate it into the roof somehow. We'll figure that out. Um, but the one really nice thing about these kits is that they come with instructions. And the instructions are, are really, really nice. Um, they tell you exactly how you can assemble it, what to be careful of, uh, because they are really delicate pieces, especially the stuff here. So just uh, something to be aware. It gives you some nice photographs for placement ideas, uh, weathering ideas, and things like that. And then also the H HO scale duct kit. Um, also some instructions and some, looks like some even some product suggestions for how to paint it and weather it and things like that, which is really nice. They have a lot of good articles on their website, so I definitely say uh, check out itlascalemodels.com, see what they've got. Um, they've got a lot of nice instructions, some good photographs. There's a lot of nice photographs, even customer uh, built kits they, they showcase on there as well. So it gives you a lot of ideas. Um, and the other thing is with a lot of their buildings, as you can see, um, a lot of their kits are representative of buildings that were built, like say in the 40s or even the 50s. And if you have a layout that's in that time frame, perfect, that's great, right? Um, if you have a layout like me where it's more modern, you can still incorporate these. And I would highly suggest considering this as well for that. Um, there's buildings that were built in the 40s, 50s, they're still around. In fact, um, in the city near me, there's a lot of buildings just like this that are still being utilized. They're not just all decrepit. I mean, you could make them look decrepit, uh, but you can also um, showcase them as, you know, still being rail served. So, and that's perfectly fine. There's actually the, the structure that I built for my switching layout is based on a building in Chicago that's still being used, and there are still rail served facilities alongside of it. So, uh, don't discount this if you're not using um, equipment that's in the 40s or 50s um, you can still use modern equipment and have this on your layout at the same time and it's still believable so uh, don't rule it out all right so back to the kits um, let's see so they, this piece here is just one kit um, just as a heads up i do have five of these here with me and so these are larger pieces than these, so these will go quicker, so to speak. So um, if you want more areas of your structures to have uh, vents and ducts, uh, pick up more than one, just as a heads up there. It's always good to have more. And yeah, so next I think what we'll do is we'll head over to the layout and see where we can actually incorporate some of this stuff. Um, I have some ideas already. Uh, like I said, um, this I'll be using as an HVAC unit. There's a couple sp places where I think I want to use this uh, 45 degree offset. Um, 
But uh, yeah, let's head over there. Let's get some more ideas. Okay, so we're over at the layout. Um, just as a heads up, I switched to my phone for this because getting in there with my other camera was kind of awkward. Um, I can get a little bit wider shot with this. So if you notice a difference in sound quality and uh, frame rate, that's why. <laughs> uh, so over here at the layout, you can see I have um, this wall structure going over the top of the tracks here. I've got this structure with the walkway going over um, over the alleyway there. So this is, this would be a perfect spot, I think, for that 45 degree offset. Maybe have another piece wrap around this side. Um, maybe I'll have one come up over here and go over it up into the rooftop. Uh, that might be cool. Let's see. We could put one either here or maybe on this wall over here. That's an idea. Um, here's an empty wall right here that could definitely house one. And this is where that uh, quote-unquote HVAC unit is going to go. I'll have the vent facing this way. And then maybe some ducts going down into the rooftop there. And maybe something over here. So definitely have a few um, ideas there. Might be able to use one of those offsets uh, over here as well. Um, so that would be uh, one kit there. Kit there. This uh, multi-scale kit. Right now I just have some fake wood planks up there. I'll remove those. Or I can keep them up there as well. Uh, let's see. One right here or maybe here. Sorry for the jumpiness. And then definitely want this one. I want this one to wrap around the side. I think that'll be really interesting to look at. And then right here. So uh, we'll head back over to the kits and start popping them out and gluing things together and then seeing where they can fit on there. Now I'm going to take sections of this layout back to the workbench with me. Um, I have this. You could check out one of my other videos uh, where I did an update on this stuff, but all this stuff is removable. You can see it's just structure held on by magnets, and this one has a small shelf for support. Uh, but all these things come out. Oh, look at that. Good thing this stuff's durable. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so before I destroy the rest of my layout, uh, let's head back over to the workbench. I'll bring some of these pieces back with me and we can get a closer look. Okay, I'm going to start with this removable section here and I already started popping some of the pieces out to get an idea and before I go any further here let me show you um, how to get these uh, pieces uh, out without breaking them. <laughs> uh, so these come in what, what they call carrier sheets and you can just pop them out if you're careful. Uh, these larger pieces come out pretty easy. Uh, there's these little you could see it. You could see where the laser cutter left a tiny little nub uh, between the carrier sheet and the piece that kind of holds it holds it in place. And so those come out. You do have to sand these off uh, once in a while. So just as a heads up there, so everything's nice and flush when you assemble it. For these sorts of pieces here, what I like to do is start working it just with your fingers, just kind of pressing it like that, and then. I go ahead, which one was it, this one? And you can see these little nubs here if you look close. And I just take an X-Acto and I just cut those. And they come out a lot easier that way without actually breaking the piece. So, like that. There we go. So that's how I take them out without breaking them. Um, I had a couple of trial and errors on the first time around with my older kits that I got from them. So just as a heads up, lesson learned there, uh, just be careful with the smaller pieces when you're popping them out. All right, so next, uh, let's see. So I started playing around with this really quick. And I think what I want is, oh, let me zoom back out. Okay, there we go. Okay, so for this portion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a configuration like this and it's gonna go up and over into the rooftop here and so next what I'm gonna do is basically uh, glue these pieces together get the right thickness and um, see how that looks so there's also these bracings uh, bracing here and it's noticed in the instructions 
Uh, let's see. To assemble the flanges as shown um, from the carrier sheet. Now carefully thread and wiggle them into position on the ducts. So I noticed here that this is basically the same thickness. This actually slides in pretty, pretty easily. So um, if I were to paint this and do things beforehand and then assemble them, um, that might make this too hard to uh, wiggle onto because it'll add thickness to it after you paint it and apply weatherings and things like that. So before with these kits, I painted and weathered a lot of the stuff before I assembled them uh, because it was easy to do so. But since this, you have to kind of thread onto the ducts, I'm going to assemble all these things first and then paint them later. Um, they're all going to be painted basically the same color and then weathered a little bit. So um, everything's going to be gray, uh, metallic, uh, like sheet metal. Whereas this, all the different pieces needed to be different colors, and I was not going to mask off all these little pieces and paint them. So that made sense to actually paint everything separately uh, for these sections. Uh, but for this, um, everything's going to be a uniform color at first, and then get weathered after that. So I'll assemble it first, and then paint it afterwards. Okay, so um, when gluing these things up, there's a bunch of different glues you can use. Um, I like to use tight bond wood glue simply because I have a lot of this stuff around. I do a lot of woodworking and this stuff is really handy. There's different types of tight bonds. There's the original and then there's tight bond two and three and each indicates a different type of application. Um, of the three, this one will set the fastest. So I'm just gonna use it here. Also, you can use things like PVA glue, white glue, or this canopy glue here, uh, which I will use when um, gluing on these flanges. Um, this will dry clear, or mostly clear in some cases, depending how thick you put it on. Um, this will hold pretty good, um, but for structural integrity, I like to use the wood glue instead. Um, but for things like gluing on, you know, um, clear glass, I mean, it's, it's canopy glue, right? So anything where you need a clear application or you don't need um, something opaque that once it sets up afterwards, you can see through it. Um, that's what this is good for, but it will work on some of these smaller detail pieces. Um, but for the most part, I'll be doing this. And all I do is I take and I apply a little bit to some sort of cardboard palette. And I'll just take uh, like a little skewer here, uh, take a little bit, put it on, assemble the, uh, press the pieces together, let them set up, um, and then move on to the next piece. I don't like to apply it straight onto the thing because this comes out pretty quick. I like to do it in little dabs. Not, you don't really need a lot. Um, a little will go a long way, especially with this stuff. Um, it'll just uh, adhere to it really nicely. So, Okay, so I'm just gluing up the last section here. I'll show you how I do that here. I'll try to do this so that um, I don't block the, the view with my hands. That's all I need, just a little bit, just like that. And I'll take the pieces, press them together. I'll squeeze it down initially, uh, kind of hard, and then just kind of shift it around until all the lines match up. Wipe away the extra squeege that comes out. Now let's see, this is almost lined up. I'm just gonna press it flat against the table to get that lined up. And then this side, press this down. And that looks pretty good. No additional squeeze out. Um, let's go zoom in here, focus on this. I don't know if we'll focus this close, but as you can see, all the lines are matched up. And I'm just going to let this set. Now, this type, original type bond will set up pretty quick, and I won't be able to pry this apart after only a few minutes. So, let that set up, and uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that the pieces are set up, um, it's time to make sure they fit well. Now, if you notice, there's like a, this little nub that was left over by the cutting process when they're attached to the carrier sheets. All you got to do is take a little sanding stick or an, an old emery board or something like that and just sand it flush. And then make sure that there's no gaps. That looks pretty good. And then move on to the next piece. Uh, just make sure they're all flush as you go on. Those gaps uh, really start to become apparent once you go through the painting and the weathering process. So take the time at the start of the project to make sure everything um, sands down perfectly and then uh, move on to the next step. Okay, so for building the flanges out, um, all I did was I followed the instructions here. 
and it says use the carrier sheet as your build fixture so you basically remove the square flanges and you um, glue them down to these brackets here uh, so all you got to do is pop this out I'll just take an exacto run it along where those little nubs are pop that out gently we'll do the other side too I gotta be careful it's hard to pick it up off the table. They're so thin. Oh, not quite there. There we go. I felt it. So that should pop right out. Almost. Well, this one's kind of... This one's really in there. Alright. There we go. Okay, so now that we have that piece out, all we have to do is glue it down to this brace right here. I'm just going to take some of that glue just a little bit and a little dab here a little dab there and then take this piece and I need to get down to eye level here sorry if my hands are in the way it's hard to see looking down on it. So I just felt that snap in and so I'm just going to let it set there. Now I've got a little bit of excess on the sides so let me get rid of that. Just got to take your time with it. Got a couple minutes before the glue sets. There we go. All right, and then to make sure that's nice and square, which it looks like it is, but you can actually just use the pieces you already created. Squeeze that together, press it down, nice and square. All right, so I'm just going to let that sit, and then once that's set up, these little nubs on the side of the braces, I'll just poke my X-Acto down through those, and this will come out pretty easy. Okay, so now that these flanges have set up, it's time to uh, thread them onto these ducts. And I did one already, and you do need to be careful. The instructions say, be careful, and you, you, you do. <laughs> I almost snapped it. So what you do is just basically thread it on there. Get it there. And then kind of wiggle it down the length of the duct. Uh, don't go too quick. If you find that it's too too tight, um, I suppose you could sand down one of the edges, or I don't know. I wouldn't want to sand out the inside of the flange; that would probably break it. Um, but you, I would imagine whatever side of the the duct is not going to be visible, I'd probably just sand that piece. Um, in case I come across one that is is too tight, I'd, I'll probably do that. Uh, but this is going on pretty pretty good. Oop, now see now it's getting a little stuck. Oh, there we go. Alright, so now it's just a matter of taste where you want them to line up. I'll probably keep one right about maybe there. And then one at this line and one at this line. Um, at this point it should be going over the rooftop, so I won't be able to put a flange right there. Um, so I think just four of them on here will be plenty for this. But once I get them on there and compare it against the side of the building, um, I'll see if I need to add any more or if I just put too many on uh, or just see how it looks and, and, and go from there. Okay, so as you can see, the glue up portion is done with this. I glued all the flanges in place, added some wall connection plates and some access covers. And so this is the basics of how to assemble these according to the instructions that I've read. And so now it's just a matter of going ahead and putting together all the other configurations that are going to be on the other parts of the structure. So this particular one's going to sit just like this, or somewhere around there. I haven't quite decided, uh, but once it's painted, um, I can go ahead and look for final placement, see what looks good, and then uh, glue it to the uh, structure. Okay, so for this part of the assembly, I'm going to turn this machine house into an HVAC unit. And I've decided I'll definitely use one of these fan assemblies 
for the rooftop. Now, I could try drilling a hole and then try chiseling out um, the section um, for the fan. However, chances are it's not going to be exact. And once you start using like a chisel um, on MDF, it starts to get pretty flaky. So instead of doing that, I have a bunch of extra pieces of eighth inch MDF, which I really love. In fact, the reason I got all this, uh, I got a bunch of sheets of this was because of these kits. And I was really impressed with how MDF is as a building material for HO scale structures. And so what I did was I, I went on to um, Etsy and I found a place called the Crafty Knights and they sell a bunch of different materials for Glowforge users. And these sheets, this isn't the original size, it's actually like a 19 by 12 inch sheet. And I got like a box of like, I think 20 or 30 of them. And I've been using them for all different types of projects, even on the layout. And so what I'm gonna do is cut up a bunch of pieces here and then I'll build the assembly and I'll kind of assemble these pieces around the fan assembly and create my own roof. And then once I have that all to the exact dimensions that I need, I'll glue it together and then trim it up to be uh, this size here. So I'm still gonna use this piece, but as like a cutting template, essentially. So I'm gonna head over to the saw, cut this up, and I'll be right back. So here's the pieces that I cut up. All I have to do now is assemble them like so. Now the fan assembly, all I did was pop them out and I just stacked them on top of each other. I didn't glue anything down yet because I'm going to paint each piece separately. Uh, but now that they're in the right position, I can come in, I can glue these four pieces together, uh, probably use some putty to fill in the gaps. And then once I'm happy with that, I can come over here, pop this piece out, put it on top, trace a line around it, and then I can trim it off. I'll probably put uh, drill a hole somewhere in this to indicate where the center of this fan should be. That way when I set it down there, I'll know the uh, correct orientation so that it looks nice. I'll probably offset it to one side or the other. And then, yeah, then I can trim it and everything like that. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is glue these together and then do that whole process and I'll be back after that. Okay, so before I put this fan assembly together, I pop them back into the carrier sheet here. And I'm just gonna quickly paint these up. It's easier to pop them in here and paint them this way than to try to hold them and uh, mess up the paint job uh, if you're holding it by hand or tweezers. So um, I'm just gonna paint some various colors here on here and then um, I'll weather it later on. I just wanna get the base colors down so I can glue it together and get it ready for the HVAC unit. Here's how the assembly for the HVAC unit's coming along. I put together the wall pieces here. Uh, I also put together some ducts from that same sheet, and that'll be on attached to the side there. I use this as the cutting template to figure out where to place the access hole, and then here's the completed fan assembly as well. So that's gonna go right in there. And there were some gaps in here, so um, this gray stuff is actually just this, uh, to me, a putty and that sealed those up quite nice, sanded it down. And so now the next thing for this is to, well, I do have to uh, pop this vent out, gotta paint that up. There's some wall connection plates that I painted or started to paint that I'm gonna use as detail pieces for the top of this. And then when this is all said and done, this will be popped into there, glued into place, and it looks something like that. Here I have some completed pieces uh, all the different configurations I've come up with so far. Um, these are basically ready for paint, and I'll go through each step on how I plan on painting them. I'll do it, I'll demonstrate on one of the pieces, but I'm gonna do the same thing for each one of them. But for now, I just wanted to show you where these are going to be placed. So this is gonna go onto this part of the structure here, like that, I demonstrated that earlier. Uh, this one, I'm really happy with. I really like uh, this configuration that's gonna wrap around the wall on here. And this actually uh, connects to here on the layout, so that'll be cohesive there. And then this piece here is actually a main part of my uh, warehouse structure that has two walls that come together at a 90, and that's gonna sit in there something like that. So just to give an idea for the placement of that. But next up is to get these things prepped for paint and then go through that part of the process. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down a nice coat, base coat of this metallic gray, but I'm gonna lighten it up just a little bit using this royal light gray. 
And I like the metallic um, properties of this because it'll give it a nice, oh, it looks like sheet metal. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit and then each subsequent layer and wash and powders or whatever I'm going to do to it is going to lighten it up even further, uh, make it look a little bit more faded. So we're going to start with a somewhat darker color um, and then we'll go up from there. So the first thing we'll do is we'll give it a nice coat. So now I'm at this part of the process where I'm going to start adding some washes to this to kind of lighten it up a little bit. Um, what I did was I took some mineral spirits, just some plain old odorless mineral spirits, and some white oil paint, uh, one of my favorite brands here. Um, this one's also water soluble, so it makes for easy cleanup. And then all I'm going to do is just mix up a wash with the mineral spirits and the oil, and then just take that and apply it to the kit here. So this kind of represents you know, metal that'll be faded, oxidized, um, sun bleached, whatever have you, uh, just to kind of lighten it up a little bit because it's a little too dark for my taste before I put any of the, uh, any rust or any other type of grime on it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll just zoom in here. Hopefully that's in focus. And then just apply it, <clears throat> dip into the wash and then can go either way, but I'm just going to go run it down since this is facing up on the model. And I'm just going to apply that to the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish this whole thing and I'll be right back. All right, so here is the piece with the wash applied to the whole thing. And just as a kind of a before and after, I didn't do the wash on this one yet. You can kind of see how much lighter this one is. Uh, hopefully you can see it. It's kind of hard to tell on my, uh, my screen here. But um, this is definitely lighter. It has more of like a sun bleached, washed, oxidized type of look to it. So pretty happy with that. And so the next step is to apply some dirt and some grime and some rust spots and things like that. All right, so now on to the next step, which is adding s some uh, rust. And what I did was I mixed up a bunch of uh, burnt umber here. Just made a wash out of that. And it's just some more oil paints. And over here, a wash of burnt sienna. This is gonna represent older rust. This will represent newer rust. Um, I'm not doing a lot of the newer rust. Uh, I don't want it to be a complete rust bucket um, here, but um, I definitely want to highlight a few sections. So I'm going to mostly use this over here and all I'm going to do is just similar idea except I'm not going to wash the entire thing. I'm just going to do select areas wherever I feel um, rust would have accumulated. So like along the flanges, you know, creases and um, joint lines and things like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it do its thing. And then um, I'll finish the rest of this, and then we'll move. I'll show the step with the uh, the burnt umber. Or I'm sorry, the burnt sienna. Uh, do a, a, just a slightly different technique with that one. Uh, I'm going to finish this uh, burnt umber stuff, and I'll be right back. Okay, there is one thing um, that I do want to highlight here as I'm going through it, and I'm just going to show you how easy it is using these washes to um, put color into little areas like creases and, and corners and things like that. Uh, because the mineral spirits, uh, really don't, you don't have any ten surface tension to worry about, it flows right into all the different areas using uh, capillary action. So if I just touch this here, see, I don't know if that shows up too well. Let me make it a little darker. You can see how it just flows around the corners, creates some random some randomness. So that's uh, one way to introduce, um, you know, different types of random weathering uh, by using using things like this. So just wanted to highlight that before we move on to the next step. Okay, so with the newer rust using this burnt sienna, I'm going to be a little bit more delicate about it because I don't want it to be 
all over the place. Um, so I'm just going to pick and choose some minor areas, um, basically where a lot of the older rust has built up. I'll kind of move it into those sections just to uh, add a little bit of that on top of it. I'm not going to worry about adding newer rust on top of areas that don't already have older rust. Um, I just feel like that probably wouldn't make a lot of sense in a lot of cases. Um, now the one thing I do like to do with this here is I'll make sure I grab a little bit of some concentrated oil and I'll dab that and make an even more concentrated area. Let's see if I can highlight that here. Um, this looks a good spot. So it's going to be a lot more concentrated in those areas and I'm only going to do that um, sparingly. I'm not going to do it all over the place but just to get a little bit of random visual interest uh, throughout the piece. Okay, so there's one more step I'm going to do with the weathering process here. I'm just going to take a little bit of um, weathering powder and I'm just going to add a few, oh, just areas of visual interest here. So maybe some uh, dirt and grime that's a little bit more there. That's running down the sides and stuff like that um, here and there just to make it look like, you know, stuff drips down <laughs> so when it rains all the dirt and everything old rust whatever uh, goes downward so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some uh, powder to the various parts of this model and all the other ones and then um, we'll move on to uh, whatever's after that okay so I have it on the structure here just kind of placed it there I didn't glue anything down yet um, looks pretty good, but the one thing I was like, you know, something's missing, and I realized that um, all this dirt and grime and rust would have been streaking down the side of the building as well. So what I'm going to do is take some of these weathering powders that I have here, oops, <laughs> and um, uh, Dark Rust, Medium Gray, and Dark Earth by uh, Monroe Models, and I'm just going to play with, you know, adding some weathering streaks down there to see how it looks and then uh, we'll go from there. So what I'm basically gonna do is wherever I have this um, vent or duct, I'm just gonna move it over just a little bit so that I know exactly where each one of these braces or brackets are gonna be sitting. And then I'll take some of this uh, powder here. Actually, I, had the, I was experimenting and dark rust is actually like the same color as this brick, so it didn't really show up. So instead I'm gonna use a light rust and I'm just gonna tap it there bring it down a little bit and just move up do the same thing there and do that again and up here all right so now if I move this back looking pretty good so I'm going to mix up some other uh, powders here I'm going to try some medium gray and dark earth to experiment and hopefully I don't uh, botch it up too much here, but I'm thinking this is going to turn out pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, we'll be right back. Added a bunch of weathering streaks here and I'm just going to move this into place. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. I also weathered up the top here. As you can see, I added some, some schmutz around the top. Uh, connection plate there. So um, now all I have to do is do it for the rest of the structures where there's going to be uh, more ducting and then uh, we'll come back to the uh, probably the gluing process. For the glue process I'm going to be using canopy glue uh, because if anything squeezes out the side um, at least it'll dry clear so you won't really notice it too much and all I did was I put a little dab onto my uh, glue laden cardboard palette here. I already glued this one into place, so that's all set. I just put a piece, uh, a little bit of glue on this end and this end and just carefully uh, lowered it into place. Uh, but for the next one, I have this piece here. Hopefully I can get this into the, uh, to the camera view here. This one I'm going to glue up on its side. And so I didn't record the other one, but at least I can record uh, this one. So. Um, I was mostly experimenting uh, to make sure um, everything was going to work right. So I got a bunch of pieces to glue up, uh, so at least I can get that on here. So for this, we're going to have this piece here, and that's going to sit just like that. Yep. 
And then I really like how this one came out. I think that's a really cool uh, configuration. And uh, I think the weathering came out pretty good on that. So for this, all I'm gonna do is take some glue and these pieces here, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, these ends here are gonna receive glue and a few of these uh, brackets are also going to receive glue because those are the ones, pieces that are gonna be touching the side. So all I'm gonna do is take some of this. Uh, again, keep it in camera. A little bit there, it won't take much. Um, it does get really tacky pretty quick and it holds quite well. So for this, I'm just going to, oh, again, I'm off camera, sorry. Sorry about that. And then let's see, we'll do a couple more. Just a, just a little bit, maybe more, maybe this one. All right, so for now, that's good enough. Now I just have to carefully place it so I don't get any accidental uh, glue squeeze out in places I don't want it, which I just did. Of course. Of course I did. That's okay. I can mask that later. So now that that's, that's already tacking up, so that's pretty good. You can see right here, a little bit got dabbed onto there, but um, hopefully this won't mess it up too much. Well, this is a live, sort of live, um, fixing of some mistakes. And I see that came out pretty good. It's already starting to clear up, so you can't even tell that it's there. And if you do notice it, well, you've got eagle eyes, right? So um, I'm going to let this set up here fully, and then I'm going to put the piece onto the big structure here, which I'll demonstrate where that'll go. So for this one, zoom out this building here this is my main warehouse structure and this one is going to receive uh, that there this one's going to receive this one and that's going to go into place right there this one's going to be tricky i can't lay this on its side so i'll have to maybe get something to i don't know set underneath here to hold it up for a second and then the other thing that i i kind of failed to um record the whole process of, but here is the completed HVAC unit, which started off as uh, an N-scale machine shop, or I'm sorry, a um, machine house. And it's got some duct coming off the side. Uh, I glued some wall connection plates to the top just for some details. This is the vents. And then here's the fan that I installed into the top of it. As you can see, nothing special going on here. Um, I just cut some holes. And then um, I'm not, you're not even gonna see the back of this. I just painted up through some um, some weathering on it, the same thing I did for the other ones, through some powder on the top. And I'm just gonna let that sit there. I don't really need to glue that down. Um, it's not gonna be hanging off of anything, but uh, looks pretty good. So uh, I'm gonna get this glued up and then I'll put these back onto the layout and we'll see how they look under the lights. Okay, so I'm over here uh, back on the layout under the lights here and I'm back on my phone because it's a lot easier to uh, navigate around here. But as you can see, the detail pieces I think look pretty good. Um, they really make the buildings come to life. Um, you'd be surprised what these little details can do to make a scene pop. There's one in the corner there, and then of course they've got the uh, machine house turned HVAC unit up on the rooftop there. Uh, but all in all, I'm really happy with these. They're a lot of fun to build, and yeah, I highly recommend um, ITLA for their, their detail kits. All right, so that concludes the build process for now. I was able to accomplish quite a bit over the course of a weekend, made for a nice weekend project, uh, but I do have some of this stuff left over, so I will be creating more of these in the future to add to other portions of the structures on my layout. So a lot of fun, highly recommend this stuff. Uh, really is a joy to work with. Um, so that's about it for now. So hopefully you enjoy this video. You got some tips and tricks out of it, maybe some inspiration for details that maybe you want to add to your layout. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go run some trains. So as always, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time.